It's been a tumultuous year in the upper echelon of the state's court system with turnover in high-profile leadership roles, as well as changes in more obscure yet powerful positions, such as the Chief Administrative Judge Post, which is responsible for overseeing the day-to-day operations of New York's court system. For more on the turnover in this role specifically, which is being filled by the Honorable Joseph Zayas, we're joined in the Capitol Press Room by Richard Lewis, Special Counsel at Hinman, Howard, and Cattell, and the President of the New York State Bar Association. Welcome to the show, Dick. Thank you. It's nice to be here. And I think I should begin by saying congratulations uh, on recently ascending to the role of president. Well, I appreciate that. It's quite an honor for me. And if we have some time, we might actually dig into that a little (laughs) bit more. But first, let's talk about this job of chief administrative judge. How powerful is it? Because like I mentioned at the top, I I think your average New Yorker has no idea that this job even exists. You know, it's a huge job. Um, Basically, the chief administrative judge runs the court system. He deals with the judges, and they're located in like over 300 locations. There is a budget of about $3.3 billion that he has to deal with, and there are in excess of 15,000 employees. It's a job that requires great administrative ability, a great understanding of the purse strings, and a great understanding of the law. Our past chief administrative judges and our new one have to be involved with not only all of the personnel, but also new rules, new laws that are coming before the courts. And is this a job where if they're doing things well, no one's going to notice them? You know, that's probably true. I've never thought of that because in the lawyer business, we do notice them Mm -hmm. and we appreciate what they do. But it's probably true that unless they do something that is terribly wrong. They probably are not noticed by the general public, but they deserve notice. Make no mistake. Well, before we get to Judge Zayas and your thoughts on his elevation from an appellate judge to the chief administrative judge, how are you going to remember Lawrence Marks, who served seven plus years in this administrative role, making him, I believe, one of the longest tenured chief administrative judges in New York's history? And a judge with great endurance. Judge Marks oversaw the court system through very difficult times as we went through the pandemic and so on. He was involved in a lot of very critical decisions that impact lawyers and therefore impact parties in lawsuits for, as you say, uh, seven or so years. I have great respect for, for Judge Marks, and I think that he did an incredible job over the years. Was there any unique stamp that he put on the court system as a result of his personality or his interests or or his purview that stands out to you? Or was his time more a reflection of the priorities of his boss, the, the chief judge for the state? The priorities of the chief judge certainly enter into things. Mm-hmm. But I think that Judge Marks was in many respects aligned with the with the chief judge. And he was very interested in any number of issues confronting lawyers, starting with bar exams, starting with court rules, and so on. That was one of the huge stamps that he put on his administration. Well, let's turn now to our new chief administrative judge, Judge Zayas. What do you think about him? What stands out uh, when you look at either his resume or his statements uh, about this job and his few days in the role so far? My, my initial thought is, wow, he has the resume of success. Mm-hmm. I unfortunately don't know the judge. I hope to meet him soon. I, I look forward to working with him in my position as president of the New York State Bar Association and in his position. My understanding is, is that he is willing to listen. Uh, my understanding is, is that he's got ideas, that he's very approachable. His background is a guy that has his boots on the ground. Here's a guy that was uh, in the trial courts. He was a, an appellate judge. He was an administrative judge. And now he's overseeing this whole court system. It's interesting because last night I was actually with an administrative judge, a local administrative judge. We were chatting about what's the future going to bring. And his comment was, is this guy is spectacular. He is a guy that is going to be so good for the legal system in New York State that it's going to 
be an improvement for lawyers and thus their clients. And it's going to just be uh, a, a wonderful evolution of our system. Well, what are the areas that you think he can work on that can lead to improvements in the court system right now? Are there areas yes. that are problematic where the chief administrative judge can play a, a key role in bringing about change? I do think so. One of the areas we think that needs to have additional work, and, the, and our, our New York State Bar Association has been very involved with it, are issues that involve the court rules. When people come to New York, they look at our CPLR, which is the statement of our procedures mm -hmm. in, civil, in civil matters, and they then have to look at the uniform court rules, and they then have to look at departmental rules, and then they... Then they have to look at the rules that individual judges put out. And these rules can conflict or they can be duplicative. And that's an area I think that we would love to work with the new administrative judge on. We, for example, have a group of people who are experts in the field that have been working on a committee on court rules for the last couple years, since they came out. And when they came out, uh, we really didn't have too much of an opportunity to comment. Well, we're hoping that Judge Zayas will give us that opportunity and will listen carefully to what we say. And we, in turn, would like to hear what he has to say and listen carefully to what he has to say. Well, that sounds like a sort of proactive opportunity that the chief administrative judge has. Are there any problems or challenges facing the court system right now that will require some sort of reaction from the chief administrative judge? Well, I, I think that right now there's a backlog in the courts. Yeah, and, yeah. A little bit. Little uh, bit. And uh, you, you've recognized that. I yeah, we've heard, we've heard, you heard some of it. Yeah. And, and clearly that's going to be a challenge. And in order to get rid of that backlog, there's going to have to be ideas, changes, uh, ways that we can expedite things and make the, the, the justice system more efficient. So, for example, what has been implemented is, and, and which is a positive thing that has come out of the uh, COVID experience, is virtual appearances in court. Uh, it saves lawyers driving time. It saves clients money. It saves the, the judges court time so that they can use their time dealing with uh, the, the various cases that require personal uh, appearances, trials, for heaven's sakes, uh, motions, and so on. So I, I think imagination is required. We have a new judge that is going to be able to implement that. And by the way, it doesn't just go to the administrative judge, the chief administrative judge. It goes to our chief judge, uh, our new chief judge, uh, Rowan Wilson, who is also, I think, very open to new ideas, very open to discussing things with the Bar Association, which, re as I said earlier, represents tens of thousands of lawyers. Our job, obviously, is to try to make things better in the justice system and to work with the judges who also want to make things better in the justice system. So while they're, when we're in court, they're neutral observers, but when we're out of court, we have to be partners and work together. We mentioned our new chief judge, Rowan Wilson, whose duties are divided between not only running the top court, but being the top administrator. Really, I mean, the buck stops with him at the end of the day. Sure does. So what are your expectations, if any, for him about uh, the way he's going to run the system? Has he tipped his hand in any meaningful way to you, or does it remain to be seen how he's going to want to run the court system? The chief judge's uh, appointment is relatively recent. Mm -hmm. But it's not that we lack experience with him because he's been on the court. And what we know about the judge, he has tipped his hand. And what we think he is, is a very open guy. He's got an open door. He's willing to talk to us. The Court of Appeals is right across the street from the New York State Bar Association Center. Our doors are open. He can come over any time. And I believe his doors are open any time. Well, Dick, let's turn to, to you specifically and the new role you have as president. First of all, why did you want to be president of the New York State Bar Association? 
That's a very good question. I assume you grew up wanting to be this. Other kids were like, I, I want to be Reggie Jackson. I want to be Dr. J. You were like, bar association, here I come. Uh, uh, no, I, I think I would much rather have been Dr. J. But I never really anticipated becoming the president of the Bar Association. It just happens to be the way circumstances presented themselves. I became involved in a number of issues that were important to me and I thought very important to attorneys and, and very important to the clients who the attorneys represent. For example, the court rules. We were very upset with the way they were presented to us. We didn't have much of an opportunity to comment and we didn't feel that they should have been implemented quite as quickly as they were. Working with some of the people that I worked with on that uh, Uniform Court Rules Committee was a very impressive experience because these are smart people. I sometimes wondered why I was in the same room with them. And these are people who I really saw were dedicated to the law. They love the practice of law. They love uh, our system of justice. I love it too. And so as a result, one thing led to another, and here I am. And besides rules, what would you like your stamp on the Bar Association to be when your time as president is done? I think the centerpiece is that we would like to work with the courts and we would like to work with the legislature. And we would like very much to point out the inefficiencies and point out the duplications and so on that create impediments to lawyers. So, for example, in every area of law, there are issues. In corporate law, they talk about the publication requirement for LLCs. They talk about issues involving franchising. In trial law, I, I've mentioned a few things already. And I'm sure that the same is true with other disciplines as well. So what we'd like to do is get as much input from our membership as possible, uh, examine them, study them, and, and be thoughtful about them, and then discuss them with the Office of Court Administration, with the chief judge, with the legislature, as the case may be. Well, finally, before I let you go, I have some rapid-fire questions, if you're okay with that. I don't know if I'm okay. I'll tell you. We'll see how it goes. You can raise objections as they come. How do you feel about lawyer jokes? Are they funny or not funny? <laughs> some are very funny, and some are very insulting. I will tell you that you hear a lot of lawyer jokes, but some of the things you don't hear are about what lawyers do in their communities. And lawyers are probably the most active citizens. That's not as funny, though. It's not as funny, but it's true. <laughs> gotcha. Do you have any favorite portrayals of lawyers in pop culture? Well, sure. Uh, except I'm not very good at remembering the names of movies. But, you know, uh, what was the one that Paul Newman was in? Oh, uh, The Verdict? The Verdict, yes. That, uh, that was uh, quite a portrayal. I mean, that because you envision yourself having Paul Newman's looks as well? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dunking like Dr. J and, and, and looking like Paul Newman? You know, that that's an aspiration. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but... Well, finally, if you weren't practicing law, what would you be doing? I don't have a second option. I don't know. I, this was it? This is it. Well, we've been speaking with Richard Lewis. He's special counsel at Hinman, Howard, and Cattell, and the president of the New York State Bar Association. Richard, thank you so much for visiting us. Well, thanks for having me. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capital Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.